Hi everyone. Um, let me just start this slideshow here. Uh, welcome back from spring break. I hope you all had a really um, great time over spring break and you got some good writing done um, and you were able to read each other's stories a little bit. Uh, as for me, the stomach virus kind of hit my family, so I hope you're all avoiding that. Um, so we're still kind of recovering from that. Um, it was not as pleasant as I thought it would be. But anyway, um, for today's lecture, I want to kind of talk about what you need to do for your um, workshop. And then also I'll give you a little review session for the test. Because remember, your creative nonfiction test is this week. So, okay. Um, for the workshop, I've written some basic things to consider here. Um, while you're reading over um, someone's essay, so remember you need to read all of the essays this week and leave substantive comments. Um, if you started doing that last week, you're ahead a little bit, um, but you'll want to read all of the essays and, and leave good feedback for them. Um, so that they know how to revise it. And I will be looking through the comments and also leaving feedback um, within the next few weeks. So, um, things to consider as you're reading through these essays is number one, the backstory. So, um, do you understand the backstory of this? Is there too much backstory? Because it's a fine line, right, between dumping in a lot of info that's not needed um, or, you know, providing enough backstory that your reader can really understand what's going on. Um, the other thing is assumptions. Are there assumptions in the text that the writer is making that you might not necessarily agree with? For instance, do they talk about how wonderful their brother is and assume that you agree without really demonstrating to you or showing you through the writing that their brother is this wonderful a person? Are they assuming maybe that you have a certain political bias or are they assuming anything of their audience which might need to be proved a little bit further through the writing? Um, also, facing the dragon. This is a creative nonfiction term which means kind of writing towards the tensions. So if there is a tension going on um, going back to what I was talking about with um, a brother. So if there's a tension between the brother and the main character, is the writer writing toward resolving that tension or facing that dragon or, or is that tension just kind of looming and never resolved or dealt with in some way? Is the writer facing the dragon or avoiding the dragon? Um, another thing is dialogue. Now, in some cases, um, some creative nonfiction writers consider dialogue to be unethical. Just because what we've been talking about with creative nonfiction, the most important aspect being truth or the semblance of truth. And oftentimes, um, the appearance of dialogue makes people think, this is fictional. But a lot of writers like David Sedaris, where we read Me Talk Pretty One Day, use dialogue and use it effectively. So do, is the dialogue going so much into a space where it seems entirely fictional or is it working is something to think about. Is it believable? Does it seem like that's actually what was said or does it seem to be reaching in some way? Also, think about is there a narrative arc? And in some cases, like for instance, a lyric essay, um, which is a more an exploration of emotions, which might go in and out of time, be more poetic. Um, it might not necessarily have that narrative arc, but um, if the story seems to be more narrative in nature, has something changed? Does it have a clear beginning, middle, and end? Is it following that typical narrative structure that we're used to? Also, pacing. Does it move too fast? Does it move too slow? Um, is the pacing good? Um, Another aspect you might ask yourself is, does everything serve the story? So are there details in there, for instance, about their favorite foods, um, which are completely unimportant to the story, which don't serve the story? Um, or if there is a favorite food in there, um, you know, does that work toward establishing character or doing something for the story in some way? Make sure every detail is relevant and important. Um, and then the last thing, the heart of creative nonfiction is the voice. Because the reason we write creative nonfiction is to tell stories from a specific 
perspective, which is our own perspective. Um, and so voice becomes something that is extremely um, central because if the reader connects to your voice, they're going to connect to you. They're going to want to read the story. So we want to make sure not only that it's a strong voice, that we can hear you in your piece, that it's original, that it's interesting, that your language is rich and not cliche, but we also want to make sure that the voice is consistent, that it's not kind of switching around, unless that's purposeful, which may be the case for something like a lyric essay. So, um, with all of these questions in mind, and you might want to kind of write them down or take notes from this slide about these questions, um, read the stories a few times, um, identify not just what still needs work, but what's really working well. Oftentimes, it really helps to give the boost to, for revision if we know that something is strong in our piece, that something um, is working. Otherwise, we might feel kind of like you know, what's the point with this essay, but point out kind of what works well and then also what still needs more work. Um, and you also might do like I did with your reviews and ask questions to kind of allow the person to delve deeper into their story to see, um, because oftentimes when we've experienced something, it's not clear to us what someone from the outside might wonder about. Um, so maybe you can give them a different perspective for reflection. Um, and also you might have think of another creative nonfiction piece or even fiction piece or movie or song um, that reminds you of what they're reading or can connect to it in some way and enrich or allow them to dive deeper into what they're talking about. So for the workshop, as I mentioned, read all the stories and comment on all the stories. And then, so you're doing that this week, and then also by the end of the week, you should um, take your creative nonfiction exam. Um, so remember, you can only open this once. You have an hour and 15 minutes to complete it. Um, that being said, email me if you're having technical difficulties, of course, um, I'll make an exception if your computer suddenly crashes or something like that happens. Um, make sure you review all of the assigned essays. Look, um, I'm going to show you our Blackboard site in a minute, but make sure you look through all of the creative nonfiction folders and your journals. Make sure that you've read. Um, you might even have notes or your journals for them open in front of you um, so that you can look back and, and be specific and quote passages because there will be um, terms, as with a fiction, that ask you to connect those terms to the essays that we read over the course of this unit. Um, so, also review Gutkin's S, uh, checklist, which I'll also show you that in a second. That was in um, the first week of our creative nonfiction unit. Um, review terms. These are terms that I've mentioned in the lectures uh, mainly. So, things like reflection, scene, perspective, um, and the creative nonfiction subgenres that we discussed and were part of your discussion prompt. Um, so those are all in the video lectures. Also make sure you fully understand what creative nonfiction is and what that means. And really I discussed that at length um, in the first lecture and a little bit in the, the second also. So um, that being said, I hope you um, had a good break as I mentioned and that you enjoy reading everyone else's work this week and I'm really excited to dive into that. So um, yeah, welcome back. Oh, wait, never mind. Hold on, I was going to show you those folders, wasn't I? Give me a second and I'll do that. Oh, that's the wrong folder. Okay, um, so week 10 is where we are now. You'll see that the creative nonfiction exam, it shows it for me. It won't show that for you now in the workshop are listed there. Um, I just wanted to go back and, and make sure week 6 you noted kind of here are the stories, right, that you need to study. Here's that checklist I was talking about. So make sure you go through all of these folders um, and that you have um, studied kind of what, you, what you've been assigned to read. So, okay, that's really it. So let me know if you have questions.